Hello kids, this is Matthew Kilford for thesoundarchitect.co.uk uh, where I'll be reviewing a book today. Uh, it's called Analog Synthesizers and it's Understanding Performing and Buying um, by um, a very happy chap in his studio down there uh, called Mark Jenkins and uh, he... Uh, uh, yeah, he seems to um, he seems to have got it all going on, um, and uh, it's a really enjoyable book. Um, but my first confession is that I haven't finished it because the thing is five hundred pages bloody long. No, four hundred pages long, but still, still very, very, very long. Um, but it's one of those books that you can dip into at certain points. Although it's very well structured from the start, you don't need to uh, you don't need to necessarily uh, start at the start. Um, so. Uh, if any of you know me from uh, any previous videos, I like to talk, as all been already been proven. So here is our timer. I'm pressing play. Boom. Right then. So this book is, I would say, unashamedly geeky. And I think that it really appeals to me because my background is... Um, well, I'm a guitar player, I guess. It's, 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 it's a simple way to put it. Although now I do have uh, a studio where, I, where I'm writing um, uh, things all the time, whether it's for um, some stuff for the BBC and um, some library music and sometimes short films and, and other bits and bobs. Uh, I'm in my DOW and I'm using synthesizers, um, plugins. Um, I don't actually have any hardware. But... Um, I don't really know, and I think I'm like a, a, a lot of people um, from uh, of a certain age now, where we didn't really grow up or have a have the the money to buy synthesizers, or were even really interested in synthesizers at that time. We were always looking at the guitar player. So, uh, from my point of view, uh, this is a really, really uh, interesting book um, because it, it it's taking you back to the very beginning of, of, of synths and um, from the, like, the 60s and 70s stuff, Pink Floyd, Gary Newman, uh, people like that. The 80s stuff when Jean-Michel Jarre went absolutely mental. Uh, not in life, just he became very popular. Um, and Mike Oldfield, uh, Duran Duran, other far cooler bands as well, obviously. Um, um, although they may be your favourite bands, um, but that, that's entirely up to you. And um, uh, so... You're going to get all the keyboards mentioned here that you expect. You're going to have the Moog, Roland, you know, Uberheim, uh, the Prophet stuff, Yamaha. They're all. It's all in here. It's 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 you know. There's there's no worry about things being missed. I don't think anyway. There is obviously some geeky people out there who will probably disagree with me. Um, but what I like about this book is it does start from the, from the history of the 60s, 70s, 80s, and then just carries on uh, until really we then get into where computers start to come into so then we're, we're, we're seeing um reworkings of, of synths made into plugins uh virtual instruments uh and, and then even like later on like the euro rack stuff um which is like a new a segment in his book in the second edition so uh which i really like and i i have a couple of friends who've got into euro rack stuff um they 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 have no money obviously left because euro rack stuff is, is quite expensive and um um, yeah, I, I I don't think I can even try and get into that Eurorack thing because it, it scares the bejesus out of me. But um, so I wanted something where I could find out a little bit more about the history, um, and um, this 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 certainly does that. Um, what's also great is towards the back of the book, um, it lists as many sequences as it as it can, um, and it gives you a list of all the things that the, the, the keyboard has. So, you know, um, the, the oscillators per note and the, um, how many octaves, how many presets, how many F FX and how many, uh, even even its value, um, th this current trend. I mean, the, you know, these books, the reason why this is a second edition is they, that they do go out of date um, uh, eventually. But um, the, the thing I really love about this book is that it's, you can dip into it. I might have said at the start, you can kind of dip into it at any point. You don't have to, you know, read it from the start. Um, I like that you can, there's a whole segment on analog at the movies. So it gives you some, um, uh, some interviews with some of uh, the, 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 the composers. Um, Hans Zimmer is, is one, although it says in depth interviews. I'm not actually so sure that it's that in depth, but there are some really good interviews in there from what I've read so far. Um, and then the, the, the actual bonus extras is the website content. And you can see on the screen here, this is not just a fancy, um, you know, back page thing I've got going on. This is actually uh, a website. And um, let's see if I can get this going. Yeah, so you can see you can have 
loads, loads up. So you've got all these sort of analog um, examples that shows you all what, you know, what a Yamaha CS80 is. I'm not going to press play because I don't know about the copyright kind of things, but um, I'm sure it's fine. But I'm, I'm not I'm going to hold off pressing play um, and you can download them all. So um, which is great. So I'm, I'm sure it's probably free. But anyway, um, there's even videos, I think, on some Eurorack stuff. Yep, so he's got his own YouTube channel, um, and that takes you through um, s some of the things that he's got into. Let's see what other stuff here. So that's cool. Yeah, we've got some, um, you know, some of the latest stuff. The Behringer stuff's even into it now, um, and the studio, and the Rolly Seaboards, some Moog stuff. Um, so, and we've got some interviews. So this is the, the this is the great thing. This obviously is now on YouTube as well, which I didn't notice before. But because it's been updated, they have an interview with um, with the guys who composed the music for Stranger Things. So it's really trying to keep more updates and appealing um, uh, to um, to I wouldn't say younger um, composers, but more upcoming composers who are who are being inspired by programs like Stranger Things. Um, so that's a big. I'm very very aware that my timer is gone. Look at that. I've got four minutes forty left. Um, if if I had to sort of give it, you know, uh, s uh, some uh, uh, some cons, I guess you would say, um, I can't, I mean, the book is, I think it's 40, I, I was looking on here, so I wanted to make sure a hardback is ridiculous, it's like £100, um, £88, sorry, um, and this is on just uh, on the Routledge uh, site, but it's 32 quid, and then if we go to, if we go to Amazon as well, you can see that. Thirty-three ninety-five, um, so that's all good. Um, so for a paperback version of that, thirty-three quid with the amount of info in here, I actually think it's, um, I think it's actually that you could be doing a lot, lot worse spending your money on something like yet another compressor uh, when you have seventy-four hundred already in your DAW, or if you you don't obviously. If you're just using hardware stuff all the time, you're not really, you know, you're not really using, um, you know, a computer uh, at all. Then, um, if you've never come across a book like this before, um, I mean, my confession is that I don't really know much about synthesizers, so I'm my, I'm not going to come across as though I know everything about, you know, um, the, the 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 ins and outs and the like, have encyclopedic knowledge about this kind of thing. But it is. Um, very easy to understand. Um, it's quite lengthy because it's, you know, it's about synths. You know, synths is an, a, a simple game, but it does its best to. Um, and uh, I found it quite enjoyable. And like I said, I haven't finished it yet, but I'm looking forward to getting into more kind of the, the programming side of it and seeing how to, to, to make things work. Um, so uh, I hope I hope that helps. I've lost my timer again. This is ridiculous. Um so um, I just like to say that um, I think it's worth giving a go. I think you can even get it as an ebook. You can look; it, it's here at twenty fifty. So if you don't need the actual, you know, you want to save space on the shelf, Kindle edition here thirty two twenty five. So actually, that ebook version is a really good deal. Um, and uh, th I, so yeah, for for that kind of price, I think it's it's well worth a go rather than scrolling through youtube which is obviously what you're doing now because you've got to me but um uh, i think you're i think you'll like it so this has been matthew kilford for the sound and uh just so you know you can reach the sound on what i've just said uh you can also get them on facebook and you can get them on twitter at sound design uk i think uh, and that's the same for YouTube. And they're even on Instagram now, which is um, the Sound Architect official. Um, so I'm aware this is uh, me blabbering about a book, but it's a book you might not have heard of before. And I think uh, for someone in, it's going to cover a lot of people, but I think for, for, for us that just fiddle around with synths all the time and plug it in, um, if we're being honest, we don't really know what we're doing half the time. Um, I think it's a good opportunity to use this book and um, and the website content, remember, that you get free with it um, to, to learn a bit more about it. And you might just find that you're um, uh, there's some aha moments, some light bulb moments. Well, you can have aha. They, they, they use synths all the time. I'm going to leave it on that. I'm not going to better that, am I? Okay, cheers. Bye.